This is a recording for Greece Farmini and I'm Dr. J.K. Grover. Uh, when the editor asked me to share my views on Gandhiji, I thought of the English translated version of his autobiography that my dad had given my son with a comment, I would like you to read this and discuss. I don't know if he's read it, but I fished out the book and was happy to see quite a few markings that my dad had made. I quickly read them and here I am introducing the great man through his book, his ex the experiments, my experiments with truth. He is brutally frank and shared his inner emotions. He was a very shy, he was very shy as a boy or a young adult. However, like any other boy who'd like to experiment with taboos or unethical values, he then came out of it with his own reasoning. He undoubtedly was truthful and honest. I'd like to share, uh, number one, his uh, first taste of ahimsa, second, his meat-eating desire, third, his uh, walking uh, and keeping an account and then how he turned 180 degree and became a champion of the cause of vegetarianism. So the fifth one that I would like to talk is his inability to speak in public. So these are the things that I would like to talk about. So he, along with his brother, was fascinated with smoking. For this, they gathered stubs and smoked on the sly. When 12 or 13, they then started pilfering some coppers from the servants and bought the cigarettes. It was such a chore to smoke away from the prying eyes of all. Not fair, these elders prying in their affairs. Well, at 15, his brother ran into a debt of rupees 25 and to clear his debt, uh, they cut out from his amulet of solid gold and sold it. Then he thought enough is enough and he decided and wrote it, uh, he wrote a letter of remorse and confession to seek his father's forgiveness and asked for adequate punishment if he could think of. And he pledged he would never steal again. He handed this letter to his father and sat on the opposite plank waiting to see his reaction. So while his father read, pearly drops trickled down his cheeks, his father's cheeks. He tore the note and thus he was pardoned. Yes, his father tore up the note and thus he was pardoned without any words spoken. Gandhiji learned the lesson of Ahimsa, he writes. His fascination for meat-eating. They were Vaishnavs. He wanted to be strong in order to get over his fear of ghosts, thieves and serpents. A doggerel was famous amongst the schoolboys. Behold the mighty English man, he rules the Indian small because being a meat eater, he is five cubits tall. He wanted all to be strong and daring. So that, uh, so, so he wanted everyone to eat meat so that the boys might defeat the English. He did experiment with eating it in a momentous departure in life, but eating on the sly, he didn't quite fancy. He felt guilty of duping his parents, so he decided that he'd take it up once they were no more. He, he wanted to do it openly, that is. Well, he did a 180 degree when he went to England to study law. After reading a book, Salt's Plea to Vegetarianism. Gandhiji read the Salt's Plea to Vegetarianism from cover to cover. Earlier in England, he abstained from meat because of his vow to his mother. Now, he had made a choice 
in favor of vegetarianism. So now uh, another thing is initial years in England. In the initial years, he wanted to change in a British as a, into a British gentleman. A little introspection about why he was there away from home and he gave up this infatuation. He gave up his infatuation for being a gentleman to le learning how to dance, how to play the violin, how to dress up and now began a period of thrift. He kept an account of every farthing he spent. And he writes, let every youth take a leaf out of his book and make it a point to keep an account for everything that comes into and goes out of his pocket. With economizing resources, surely one gains in the end. He developed a fairly strong body free from any illness because he chose to walk to destinations to save money. Plain living saved him plenty of time besides money. So he had enough time for studies now. He contemplated doing BA, but it was very expensive. So he settled down to writing the matriculation exam of Britain. He struggled with learning Latin, where, which served him in good stead when he came back to India. He changed to smaller quarters and he decided to, that is he decided to change his rental quarters every six months. Because, uh, and uh, cheaper quarters and he would walk around the whole place. He felt it was more in keeping with the means of his family and his life was certainly more truthful and more joyful now. The man who moved the world with his words could not speak. He was so tongue-tied. So whenever he got to speak, he just, the words just won't come out. In England, he started the vegetarian club. He was elected uh, to the executive committee of the vegetarian society. He attended every, every one of the meeting, but he could not stand up and give, uh, even in that little group to express himself. He felt every one of the members appeared to be better informed than he was. Even to make a small point, he was not able to express. He just could not talk. For example, for example, he had to make a small point that in the vegetarian club, all were welcome to be the members by the virtue of their being a vegetarian irrespective of any other morals that they had. But he just couldn't talk. It was only in South Africa that he got over his shyness, uh, though he says he never overcame it. So another thing, his hesit but he says, his hesitancy in speech was once an annoyance, was a benefit, he felt, because it taught him economy of words. He prided himself uh, with never a thoughtless word escaped his tongue or pen. He believed in economizing of words, hence he did not regret anything in his speech or, or his writings. It is interesting when he talks about his first case in Bombay, he knew nothing of the Indian law. Stories of stalwarts like Sir Ferocia and Mr. Badrudan Taibji unnerved him. He could never be like them, he thought. 
In Bombay, he took up the case of Mammy Bai. It was an easy case. He had charged rupees 30. Uh, the case was not likely to last longer than a day. He writes, this was my debut. I'm reading what he wrote now. He, he writes, this was my debut in the small causes court. I appeared for the defendant and had thus to cross-examine the plaintiff's witness. I stood up, but my heart sank to my boots. I could think of no question to ask. The judge must have laughed, and the wakils no doubt enjoyed the spectacle. I sat down and told the agent that I could not, uh, uh, couldn't, uh, He said, I sat down and told the agent that I could not conduct the case. He had better engage Patel and have the fee back from me. He says he was ashamed of himself and decided not to take up any more cases until he had courage enough to conduct them. He writes, there was no virtue in it. See, he, then he says, there was no virtue in his decision. He had simply made a virtue of necessity. There would be no one so foolish as to entrust his case to me only to lose it. All this changed when he went to South Africa. He became a lawyer to reckon with. He learned that true function of a lawyer was to unite parties. Twenty years of his practice as a lawyer was occupied in bringing about parties' compromise. So we see that he learnt that the true function of the lawyer was to unite parties who were driven asunder. Twenty years of his practice as a lawyer was occupied in bringing about private compromises of hundreds of cases. He says, I lost nothing thereby, thereby, not even money, certainly and certainly not my soul. So when you're talking about that, so this is the glimpse, this is, uh, this is a glimpse that I've given of the great man known as Mahatma Gandhi. He was a deep thinker, a great doer, in his inimitable way of adopting the dress of the poorest of the poor, he made a place for himself in the hearts of the rural Indian population. And he laid down a tenet for all the policy makers to follow. That when you are essaying a policy or making a policy, you should think of the face of the poorest of the poor. And if you think you can make a difference, it is making a difference to it, then go ahead. Thank you.